Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hopefully you're having an amazing day. We're going to kick this video off discussing the RTX 3080 Ti specs and release date. Then we'll move over to the RTX 3070 Ti specs and release date. And with the RTX 3080 Ti, videocards.com are claiming that it's going to be using a slightly different variant of the die. It's going to be using GA102-225 rather than GA102-250. Although, apparently, the specs have not changed. It's going to still feature 10,240 CUDA cores. So that's obviously pretty close to what we have with the RTX 3090, but it's a small bump over the RTX 3080. As for VRAM, well, this one's quite interesting. Despite there being multiple reports that we were going to see 20 gigabytes of memory, that apparently was for an older SKU, as Copity 7 Kimi recently uh, has, you know, relayed in several tweets. And according to videocards.com, and this is backed up by my own information as well, it's going to be a 12 gigabyte board. Honestly, I think this makes sense. How it was explained to me by my sources is that a um, NVIDIA, excuse me, not AMD, NVIDIA wanted more separation between the RTX 3090 and 3080 Ti in terms of memory so that they can market the cards a little differently. We'll have to see, of course, how the marketing is handled. But yeah, basically speaking, this card is nothing new in terms of the specifications and the release date is also backing up what I was told. So early boards are going to start going out uh, beginning of next month. So that's April if you're watching this in the far long future if it is and this information is incorrect feel free to say yeah that wasn't right in the comments down below and furthermore the of course uh, according to my information we will see a release of these gpus by end ish of april it's going to be like the last week that's what i was told but now shifting our direction to the rtx 3070 ti and this i found actually the more interesting of the two cards because when I spoke to my sources, I was told that they knew nothing about this GPU. However, videocards.com alleged that this GPU is actually going to release in May, so around a month after the RTX 3080 Ti. Well, what about the specifications? Well, this I'm sure is going to raise some eyebrows. So the card is going to be based on GA104-400, at least according to the AIB source. This is an exact quote, has received initial specifications featuring GA4, GA104-400, indicating the card would offer 6144 CUDA cores, just as many as the RTX 3080 mobile. Furthermore, the card will also be outfitted with 8 gigabytes of GDDR6X memory. As always, the prices of the card, of course, are going to be really the deciding factor, I suppose, for many. And it's also going to be quite interesting, too, with NVIDIA throwing all of these cards on the shelves in terms of stock and availability. Just a quick note, actually, on NVIDIA's availability. So, from my understanding, the RX 6700 XT's availability was pretty darn good, but the cards, of course, just sold out in seconds. And to my understanding, NVIDIA had, with the RTX 3060 Ti and RTX 3060 Vanilla, they had several times the stock as what AMD did with the RX 6700 XT. Again, though, just because of the demands in the GPU market, they still sold out almost instantly. However, to my understanding, NVIDIA are doing better now in terms of the stock situation. It's something that they are working on. And I still feel it's going to be several months, honestly, before we see any type of alleviation into the, um, you know, the market as a whole. But what's quite interesting, too, is the video cards are stating that they're not quite sure what's happening with the mining limitation on both the 3080 Ti uh, as well as the 3070 Ti. Obviously, NVIDIA themselves did an oops with the mining drivers for the 30, uh, for the RTX 3060. And uh, the good news is with those mining drivers, it only enabled you to mine on one card with Ethereum. But yeah, it wasn't exactly the best look for NVIDIA, to be honest, after they made such a big deal of nerfing the mining performance. I do suspect that we will continue to see an evolved form of that for the RTX 3080 Ti, as well as the 3070 Ti. But, of course, yeah, <laughs> how long it takes for miners, if they can circumvent it, well, yeah, only history will tell us that. As a small aside, actually, while we're on the NVIDIA news, uh, Kopity 7 Kimi, who's been really accurate with a ton of NVIDIA stuff in the past, is claiming that we will see an Ampere A100-based mining card from NVIDIA, and he claims that the hash rate for this is insanely good. Um, obviously, this is part of their CMPHX family, 
and it could be actually the fastest mining card available on the planet. How appealing this is going to be for miners will naturally depend upon multiple factors, including availability and pricing, but it's clear that NVIDIA are going to continue to attack the mining market by simply offering products in the uh, mining lineup while trying to make the GeForce products less appealing. At the moment, honestly, it's not had the uh, effect that we would hope for. But then again, to be fair, the mining cards have only just started to go on sale, starting to go on sale, should I say, and they've not even unveiled all of the lineup yet. To my mind, it's going to be very interesting to see what happens when Ethereum mining is no longer as profitable on a GPU and to see whether another cryptocurrency kind of takes its place or not, or whether we'll see like a lull in the bubble. With any luck, it will be a case of like the bubble kind of dips and the demand starts to go down a little bit. And we will also see finally the increased availability thanks to uh, AMD gobbling up more of uh, TSMC's manufacturing capacity, as well as, of course, NVIDIA with Samsung. They've done much the same. So hopefully that will start to smooth things out in the market. Given Lovelace as well as RDNA 3 does not launch until uh, next year, I'm hearing around the midpoint, although that's not solid at the moment. So don't quote me exactly. I just know it, it's going to be n not early in uh, 2022. It's going to be interesting to see how the GPU market evolves, especially now Intel are pushing XC and starting to do all of their teases. I don't 100% like the way that Intel are marketing XC with the teasing. I kind of wish that they were handling it more like NVIDIA or AMD in that respect, but you know, I'm not against it. Ultimately, it's just the product itself. If all of my information is correct, and we're going to be looking at a card which is decent at around RTX 3070 kind of performance, it could actually be a decent competitor in the market and possibly, depending on how it does in mining, it might actually be a card which is fairly readily available. It's hard to deny that AMD and Nvidia are on high alert about this. In fact, when I was given the performance targets of RDNA 3, one of the things I was told is that Nvidia are acutely aware that XE is actually shaping up to be very good, especially products later on in the uh, life cycle of the GPU. So they didn't really qualify what that statement meant, but it kind of it was implied to me that XE or DG2 is going to be decent, but the other architectures are going to be a lot more competitive. But even the first generation is apparently decent in ray tracing. We'll see how that plays out, though. To me, I'm more curious how Intel can get their ducks in a row with software. With that said, though, thank you very much for checking out the video. If you've enjoyed it, then of course you know what to do. Subscribe to the channel and ring the bell icon and all of the normal jazz. But with that said, take care of yourselves. Bye for now.